Now up from Houston, Kelvin Sampson. The Cougars at 23-1, and 10-1 and one in conference play, first place in the standings, and recently defeated number 25 Cincinnati for their 32nd straight home victory. They are in action this Thursday at UConn on ESPN. Coach Sampson, tell us a little bit about Houston heading into the final four weeks. Well, the thing I like about our, our team right now is um, you know, our, our senior, our seniors are um, doing a great job in practice every day, helping our uh, younger guys. You know, we've got three sophomores and two freshmen. We're playing uh, major minutes in our rotation. Uh, Nate Hinton and Seth Alley, uh, the two freshmen. I like, I like the fact that they're getting better. You know, when you play young players um, going through the season we're going through, you know, there's so many things you have to manage uh, with them uh, because of outside distractions and stuff that people talk to them about, and get, you know, focusing on going to class, not getting behind in their schoolwork because of the tournaments we have coming up. They're going to be missing class a lot. Um the three sophomores, uh, Jero, uh, Gresham, and Fabian White, um, making sure they stay grounded. Um, but having senior leadership really helps with that, especially guys that bought into our culture. Um, Galen, fourth-year guy. Um, Corey and Brian being in their second year. You know, you, you know you're, you're kind of a custodian. A lot of things when you're a college coach, you know, your the well-being of uh, of your of your kids and you know navigating them through college life and basketball season and travel, wear and tear, making sure they're mentally fresh, making sure they're emotionally okay. You know, we we spend a lot. I spend a lot of time with them one on one. It was just bringing them into the office, just talking to them about life, not really basketball. Um, you know, sending a message that it's important to, you know, understand why you're here. You know, you're talking to them about their parents' expectations and, you know, just a lot of different things. I, it's, it's kind of what we're doing right now. The basketball stuff will take care of itself, but I'm I'm kind of more, Concerned right now, um, and maybe concerned is not the right word. Just, just staying on top, being proactive with, the, with making sure they understand that uh, we care about them as people. But uh, uh, being student athletes is is important. Um, working toward graduate, all that stuff. That's, that's kind of where that's kind of where I'm at right now. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, at this time, we will turn it over to our media questions. I'll take our first question from Noam Watt with UCTV. Please go ahead. Hey, Coach. You guys have had a consensus top 10 defense in the country and showed that again Sunday against Cincinnati. So going into a matchup with UConn, who's missing Jalen Adams, and also possibly Altery Gilbert, what's the defensive philosophy against Coach Hurley's squad? And in addition, what differences have you seen between their team this year and last year? Uh, uh, the first part of your question is what's our defensive philosophy against UConn? Yeah, especially since Jalen Adams and possibly Altry Gilbert will be out on Thursday night. Well, our defensive philosophy wouldn't change whether they were there or not. You know, the only, you know, uh, Jalen Adams is one of the best guards in the country. Um, you know, it's a, you know, it's just a uh, shame. A senior he came back for his senior year. I, I hate that for him, and um, and also for Coach Hurley and his program. Um, but as far as our preparation, um, you know, we haven't gotten into our scouting report yet. Um, I was watching a little bit of the Memphis their game against Memphis yesterday, and I was uh, um, I, I was just amazed at what what a great job Danny's doing. You know. Teams playing hard, they're fighting. Um, 
their young players are getting better. But as far as uh, our game plan, we really haven't gotten into that yet. But I, you know, we, we played against Coach Hurley when he was at Rhode Island. Um, we brought his team here to Houston, then we went to Rhode Island a few years back. So I've always been very impressed with uh, Danny as a coach. And um, congratulations to UConn for hiring hiring uh, such a great coach. I know he'll do a great job there. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Don Wade with the Daily Memphian. Please go ahead. Yeah, Coach, uh, two questions, really. One, um, is the home court advantage that you guys enjoy now as good as any as, as you've had in, in your career? And two, you mentioned all the things that you're custodian of as a college coach, travel being one of them. What What changes over the course of your career have you made in terms of the way you handle road trips to try and, uh, you know, mitigate any complications or any anything that might keep players from, from being at their best? Wow, that's a great question. You, you also bring up an important um, part of uh, is, is filling in the gaps on trips. <laughs> as far as the first part of your question, uh, you know, we were 19-0 and at Texas Southern, and people – Think we just got. We have this long winning streak at the Fertitta Center. At the Fertitta Center, I, I don't, Jeff, how many games have we played at Fertitta Center? You know, seven, eight, or ten, or eleven, something like that. Let's see, we played four. Yeah, we played. So we we won thirty-two in a row, but nineteen of those were at Texas Southern. So I kind of like our home court advantage over there because we won. Um, but the Fertitta Centers is picking up steam. It's, it's becoming a hot ticket. And, and that's all every coach would ask for, you know, is that your, your program become relevant. And, you know, we were kind of irrelevant when we got here, but, um, you know, our second year, we started winning a little bit. I think we won 22 games our second year. And then third year, we, we kind of extended it. And then last year we broke through and this year we're doing pretty good. So, uh, but the Fertitta Center is, is incredible. You know, it's it's perfect for us, 7,100 seats. I think we're sold out now for the rest of the season. Um, our, our, our our fans are starting to connect with our kids. You know, it's, become a, it's become a community thing, and that's felt like we had that just about everywhere we've been. You know, um, our little gym at Montana Tech only seat about 1,500, but Back in those days, if you get, you know, the girls always played before the boys. Um, if you get didn't get there at halftime of the girls' game, you couldn't get a seat for the boys' game. So that might have been the best home court, home court advantage <laughs> we had was in that little old gym in Butte, Montana. That was pretty good. We didn't lose in there now. Um, but uh, th- this has been been um, special to be part of here. So we're very fortunate that. We have an arena. Can't thank Tillman for Tita enough. But, but as far as the travel thing goes, um, you know the toughest thing is is going in the day before and having practice. You know, getting back uh, to your to the hotel, have a team meal. Then the next day becomes a little problematic, especially this time of year. Those kids are in classes, so you're going to have study hall at some point. Uh, you know, you get them up, you have breakfast, you have study hall, um, then you have shoot around. The shoot around is usually from 11 to 12 or 12 to 1, and if the game's not till 8 o'clock, that becomes such a long day. You know, what we started doing is around 4 or 5 o'clock. I know we had an 8 o'clock game at SMU this year. Um, we, we gathered them all into uh, a ballroom there in the hotel, and we just stretched Got them out of bed. You don't get them out of if you don't get them out of their rooms, they'll sleep all day. It's amazing how much these kids can sleep. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so we have to so we have to get them out of their rooms and straight. You, you've got to you got to find a way to chop the day up. You just can't go um, uh, shoot around pregame meal. What time does the bus leave? There's got to be something in between to get them so they're not sluggish. And you know, if you sleep all day, it's going to be hard to get your motors going. I think so. 
we've tried to chop it up over time. Thanks. You're welcome. We'll take our next question from Christopher McGee, the Houston Chronicle. Please go ahead. Good morning, Coach. I wanted to follow up on the travel thing just a little bit. Um, four of the team's final seven games are on the road, including a rematch uh, with Cincinnati on their home floor. Uh, with this being the final part of the season, uh, are, are you worried about the travel taking a toll on the players, or are you worried about any of these games being trap games uh, as you prepare for postseason play? Uh, no, no, and no. Um, okay. No, we, we prepare for um, – as far as the travel, it's just part of it. You know, you, we're not busting to these games; we're, ta we're taking planes. So I don't know why that would be a, be a problem. You know, when I was at Montana Tech, we'd bus. Uh, sometimes we'd have to bus 270 miles uh, the day of the game, play, and as soon as the game's over, bus back 270 miles. Uh, I think it would uh, bother those kids a little bit more than jumping on a plane and flying a couple hours. So. Somebody's getting somebody's getting tired, then, um, you know, I'm going to question that kid more than I'm going to question the travel. As far as trap games, uh, you know, we've won 32 straight home games for a reason. You know, we get ready to play every game. Every game's important. You know, you're, how you prepare your kids. Uh, if we lose, we're capable of losing any game we play. College basketball teaches you that every year. You can lose. There's, if you lose a game, it's not because it was a trap game. It's because that other team played well and you didn't. But uh, we try to get our kids to play hard and play together. And the way we practice, you know, the culture we've established here, we try to get that in them every night. Um, so, but if we lose a game, it has nothing to do with being trapped. It has everything to do with that other team beating us. Absolutely. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Coach Sampson, thank you very much for your time this morning. Good luck this week, and we'll talk again next month.